hey and welcome back to another video in this video we're going to be changing up the color widgets for the body and the wheels by replacing it with a color selector wheel so with that let's get started so the method for this video or this two-part video comes from the youtuber code like me i will leave a link to his youtube channel down in the description so in the first part i'm going to be showing how to create the materials and then set up the widget and then the second part we're going to be diving into the code and the functions and making everything work together so to get started we're going to create three materials in the widget folder sorry about that that was that was a mistake so right click and then say material and then the first material we're gonna call m color selector and then hold control d to duplicate it and then the second material we're gonna call this m saturation and then the third material we're gonna call it m luminance you can call it luminance value or brightness it's just gonna be the value of black and white so if you say perhaps mess with that one where it's going to be assigned then the color will either be black or white so that's pretty much it and then we're going to go with the color selector open that delete the substrate e ue4 default shader and then right click look for ui substrate ui and then connect the out pin to the print material and then make some space uh we can pretty much apply and save if it looks like this and if you want to make it look as the ui just close the material and then reopen it and then you'll get that so from here we're gonna right click and then look for texture coordinate and then below the texture coordinate we're gonna look for a constant tool vector and then from the texture coordinate we're gonna drag off and look for a subtract connect the constant tool vector to the b value for the subtract and then the x value will be 0.5 the y value also 0.5 and then from the subtract we're gonna drag off and look for vector to radial value as well as from the subtract drag off again and then we're gonna look for a vector length switch the pins from the vector 3 to the vector 2 because we're not going to use the vector 3 we're going to use the vector 2 just disconnect that switch the pin so we're going to work first on the vector to radial portion from the vector converter to angle drag off and look for sin as in sin cos 10 and then you can pretty much uh duplicate this two more times move these two out the way a little bit and then from the vector converter to angle drag off and look on add and then the add value is going to be 0.333 and then you're going to make another add and then this one will be 0.666 connect the adds to the other two sins and then from the top sin drag off and say make float no sorry not make float two let's make float three make float three and then connect the other two sins remember to connect the add to the vector converter to angle and then from here just make some space and then after the make float three drag off and look for power the power value will be 1.5 and then from the power drag off and look for a lerp if you connect it as is this is what it's going to look like that's what we had to connect the power this is what it looks like so now we're gonna do the second part the vector length so from the v2 length drag off and look for a multiply the multiply value is two and then from the multiply drag off and look for a clamp clamp will remain as is drag off from the clamp and look for a one minus then from the one minus drag off and look for power the power value will be set to three and then the power will be connected to the alpha for the lerp and then this is the end result this is what it looks like this is the color wheel in square form if you want to make it look circular then we're gonna have to add a mask to it so to add the mask drag off from the multiply connected to the vector length hit period to add a redirect node and then from the redirect node we are going to oh no it's not not from the redirect node we are dragging off from the opacity override right no the opacity mask drag off from the opacity mask drag off and look for an if an if statement and then connect the redirect node to a by the if statement set the b value to one and then add a constant so right click and look for a constant duplicate the constant the top value is zero the bottom constant value is one and then connect the zero to a is greater than b and then the one value will be connected to the other two a, another thing over here in the material 
in the blend mode go from opaque to must to enable the opacity mask so i forgot to set that you find it if you click on the m color selector the brown one over here it says blend mode it says mask it was previously opaque so we we'll change it to mask to get access to the opacity mask and then now it's circular so with that that's pretty much it for the color selector the color selector itself is just a visual representation we're gonna have to recreate the basically the same code over here in the widget but this will pretty much give the player a idea of what color they're looking for so let's just add comments around everything okay so this is the mask a comment mask this is the white point comment white point and the top part is the color points the section in front is the texture pattern so that is everything we'll come and tidy this up later but for now just apply and save then we can close the color selector and now we're going to go work on the luminance and saturation so open up the luminance or brightness or value depending on how you named it and then from here we're going to do the same thing look for ui substrate ui connect that to the front face we're not going to do the same thing as we did with the color selector instead what we're going to do is from the color drag off and look for a nerve we're going to look for a parameter a vector parameter we're going to rename this to select f2 we're going to call this left color it will be the color on the left we're going to be placing the sliders horizontally so we're going to use left and right colors and then you can duplicate this one and then rename the other one as right color and then connect the right color to the a the left color to the b the left color is black the right color is white and then for the alpha we're gonna right click and get a texture coordinate from the texture coordinate drag off and look for a mask then from the mask we're gonna drag off and say one minus and then connect the one minus to the alpha and this is the change gonna apply and save close the luminance open it again so this is what it looks like it's black on the left and then white on the right so that is pretty much it and i'll comment a little around this and say luminance i'll just call it luminance it's fine apply and save and then we're gonna go through the same thing for the saturation just apply and save this and then reopen it so we're going to do the same thing from the color we're going to drag off look for a lerp and then from the and then we're going to look for a perimeter a vector parameter we're going to call this right color duplicate it and then rename the other one as left color right click and look for a texture coordinate from the texture coordinate drag off look for a mask from the mask drag off one minus and then connect the one minus to the alpha left color to b right color to a and for now we're just going to set the right color to let's make it like a turquoise blue or something yeah, that's fine we're going to be changing it later on through code but for now it's just a visual on what it is and a comment for the saturation plan save and then that's everything and then now we're going to open up the body widget so open up the body widget and then we're going to create a new display for the color in here we're going to look for a vertical box drag it into the canvas and then in the vertical box we are going to add a it's a 2d a synth 2d slider at the end of the vertical box and then the synth 2d slider we are going to then right click say wrap with a size box so we've pretty much done that and then the synth 2d slider we're going to rename this to color selector and then within the vertical box we're going to add two more vertical boxes and then each vertical box is going to get a text block as well as a slider now we just need to make everything look nice we're gonna for now hide the pre-existing color selector and then we're gonna anchor the vertical box to the center and then just resize everything yeah, i think for now we'll leave it like that over here so the size box we're gonna overwrite the width overwrite and the height overwrite we're gonna set this to 256 and 256 that should be fine and then in the color selector we're gonna go down to the style over here by background image set the background image to the color selector 
that we created. Okay, so we need to maybe change this a bit. It's actually not fitting properly. We're gonna adjust the vertical box, make the vertical box a little bit smaller. All right, and then we're gonna set the X value to negative 940. So to give it some room on the side. All right, that's fine. And then the little select over there, the normal thumb image, where it says draw as image under style for the color selector or the synth 2D. We're gonna set that to rounded box. So it creates a rounded box like that. I'm gonna do the same for the other ones as well. And then we are going to change a couple of things. I'm gonna set the alpha maybe 0.5 it's under the slider handle color if you change the alpha then it becomes transparent so you can see through it so now we can go back to the style and then not have this be black instead set it to something like 0.85 okay 0.5 okay and then change this one over here also to 0.5 okay all right there we go so then we're going to change the text box as well Point, change it to the of your choice and then we need to change these things a bit okay so if you set this to full this to full this one to full and then this one also to full set the vertical box to full set this vertical box to full and then take the a little vertical box and then size it down okay that, that that works that works let's just change up the sliders appearance a little bit so we're gonna go to the style the bar we're gonna change this to a round box no i think it's an image because then you can change the size of it okay so we have the thumb okay so i think thumb is the one number go yeah thumb is around four four by thirty make it nice and long do the same for the other ones also image four by 30 disabled image size four by 30 uh, bar thickness 15. leave it at 15 and then we're going to set this to draw as rounded box okay do the same for this one as well rounded box hovered rounded box disabled rounded box hovered image size four by 30 image size four by 30 disabled image size four by 30. 30, 15 bar thickness. We need to change this one also. On the box, on the box. Okay, so with that, we need to change the text. Sorry, this is going to be the saturation, and this is going to be the luminance. Sometimes I can't spell. And then just set the font. So that is it. We're gonna compile, save, and then we're gonna add a couple of functions that we're gonna need for the next video. So head over to the graph all of this is going to be deleted soon so in the functions add a new function this function we're going to call vector vector to degrees and then what we're going to do here is click on the node by the input we're going to add a new input we're going to call it the vector and this will be a it will be a vector 2d so we're going to compile save and then from the vector 2d drag off and search for break vector 2d from the break vector 2d we're gonna drag off from either one of the two pins and then we're gonna look for a tan two degrees not radians degrees and then just connect the y to the y the x to the x and then we're gonna need an output so just click on the vector to degrees node like the outputs new output and then this one i'm going to call it degrees and then it will be of type float and then just drag this over connect that and then that will be it we'll be using this in the next video so for now just compile and save and then as well we are going to go to the bp save game because we need to add a couple things so blueprints uh, bp save game so we're going to add two new variables here that we're going to need to save the colors for the for the new color wheel so the first one we're going to call is color body just because we already have body color over there so and we won't allow us to save the same name twice and then this one is going to be a, a linear color and then we're going to duplicate this one control d and then this one we're going to call color wheels 
also of linear color I'm gonna compile and save and then that will be the end of this part of the two-part video in the next video we'll be doing the code I'm setting up all the code as well as the save game function and then also the load function so that as we make changes to the color wheel it will save it and then when we load when you play the editor again it will then load up the color that was last saved so with that until the next one